so once again, another round. I mean, another game of the NBA playoffs. And I guess with my little bit of a somber tone, I would like to say a little, bit, give it a little bit of an apology to Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, and when I say that, I'm saying that when I was picking and predicting and talking about the matchups of games, I was like, and I picked Dallas in six. I think there was some things I miss in the thinking process of all this. Um, and that is saying that, what, like, the reason I did pick Dallas, I think, is also its downfall. And the reason, and me saying that is, I said that the height of Luca and Kyrie, I think, can would be can over, can o sort of overcome or or stay with Oklahoma City, and. I still sort of believe that, but I think I ignore the fact of the way they play tonight is sort of how they've also played in, in, with the Clippers, and that, one, it just takes them a long time to heat up. Like, Kyrie has always a, it's been like a second-half demon compared to the first half, and... Because the way to also the Clipper play, you can sort of get by with that, where it's like you can't get away with that against uh, the Thunder. Uh, also, Luka has really been struggling this playoffs, even if his numbers do look good. But I was like, his usage rates and the number of shots he takes and, you know, look, just the amount of threes you take will always have those numbers sort of be what it is. So a lot of times the number looks a certain way, but watching the game is never that. And I think that was also sort of like apparent tonight, where I was like, he they, like he was struggling again. I was like, Kyrie didn't really he didn't have his like heat up game, but he also wasn't there in the first half in the same way. Um, and another thing too that was apparent tonight is that I think I diminish their abilities of what their overall depth compared to Dallas of necessarily like they can like Dallas can go the same amount of people deep, but the difference is that the Thunders have people they could keep going deep to that can score. Maybe I was like, and they also can create their own shot in a way that Dallas doesn't have that. Like, I was like, I was given in the bit of the fact of Tim Hardaway if he played. I was like, Keeble, I was like, uh, Maxi didn't play. Now that I think he would have made like a crazy difference, I think it would have helped in some of the matchups being played because he can shoot the three, which he gives a different dynamic than Gafford and Lively, especially versus Chet. But with they having Joe, uh, Kason. Uh, you can throw Wiggins in there. He got some minutes. Uh, the other Williams, I was like, all of them can score in a way that Green isn't a reliable enough three-point shooter. Neither is Exum, Derrick Jones. Uh, you know, all these other people that you're expecting to get valuable minutes for. And therefore, you need them to come up with timely stops. Um, I will say that I think... I do. I was like. I don't think this. I think it was a close game. Didn't the score would indicate like they was there, and I was like Dallas was missing a lot. I was like Luca was missing shots that he normally hit. I do. I was like him being hurt is a factor, but I was like he just missed those shots. He he's like he and he just sort of he'd been off like a little bit in the series in general, so he was just off again today. I was like. Shay gave you what he no sort of no, normally does, so I was like that wasn't really anything. I was like. I I was like, um, Jalen Williams heated up, um, but I was like, I was like, I Chad to me, the center position is really going to be the, the 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 one of the factors just because I seen Dallas trying to go the route like how uh, New Orleans did with the Valanciunas thing is, 
Now, I was like, I think it's different because I think Gaffer is a different type of defensive player than Valanciunas is, where Valanciunas is a better option to player than Gaffer and Lively is. Um, so I was like, and I was like, we've seen today, like, I think, like, like the thing is, is that Gafford, and I was like, this is where they miss Maxi is that because he gets his offense at the rim, but he, I was like, he can't shoot. He can't shoot free throws. He can get people in positions and that'd be a problem. And so the, the thing is, is that he'll get, the, he's going to get everybody in foul trouble, but he can't make them actually pay. And the thing is, you don't have nobody else on your team that is going to also make them pay with the fouls either. Uh, I did, I was like, but that, I was like, uh, I was like, I think it was a good sign. I'm like, uh, PJ did, I was like, he didn't hit it. He didn't hit all his three, but I was like, it was there. And I was like, he also went to the basket a couple of times. Um, I was like, but that's, I was like, and Tim Hardaway's coming back from, you know, not really playing. So, but he's going to have to try to jack up shots. I was like, and PJ, cause those really, there are only like other two people that can really do offense outside of Kyrie and, uh, Luca. Um, but yeah, my mistake is just not realizing that I'm like, even though Giddy's not a good shooter, he could get to the paint pass. I was like, uh, and I was like, uh, Jalen Williams can shoot get in the lane. Door is also a pretty good three point shooter as well too. Um, I I was like I, him being on Luca, I think while it will tire out Luca because I was like I said like he's like a bigger body. I didn't like most of the defenders that are on Luca. He doesn't. I think I don't think he deters Luca in the same way that everybody think that he would do in Ingram just because of the way that Ingram gets a lot of his shots. Like Luca creates a lot more space with his shots to get him off in comparison to Ingram that doesn't. He goes too much into the contact. Um, but I was like also too like Chad is. I think Chad is really Chad and also Williams come off the bench as a wild card because they're both. Three point shooters to where they like you seen like like Chet in the inside only does stuff when there really isn't a big dude they're out there uh, like other than that he just doesn't have the he just doesn't have the frame and his length isn't the advantage it it would normally be but the problem is is that I was like if you really don't have like depend on who you got that defender like Derek or uh, PJ. He's going to take advantage of whoever it is out there because he can shoot the three, and he's also uh, mobile. I was like mobile enough to also take advantage of like if he's on Ky like Kyrie, for instance. Um, but I do think that that despite all that, they was they was in the game for a good part. I think Dallas's defense is also also really there. Um, I was like, it just, I was like, everything just looks bad when you're missing shots and they're making them. And Oklahoma City was just making all their shots, especially at the end, because it was pretty much a between a 15 to 8 point game constantly or whatever. Then after, but then that, that big lead came about when Dallas was just missing all, I was like, all their shots. And you had Carson hitting shots, you had Wiggins hitting shots, uh, uh, Williams hitting his three, the other Williams hitting his threes. I was like, I think they called one of them J Dubs. So I was like, I'm gonna have to do that because I was like, that's, that's gonna get confusing. I said, Joe hitting it like you had everybody hitting their shots, and you can't make any. Don't get me wrong, Oklahoma City all, defense is also there too. There's their defense isn't on the level of Minnesota, but they, but I was like, they, I was like, but they're athletic. Like they're to me, they're more athletic than uh, than Minnesota. They just don't. I was like, they don't. I was like, their size. I was like, their size. They use their size differently because they don't have the great size that Minnesota has. But I was like, but they do have a lot. They have a lot of the their perimeter dudes is all about six five or higher. Uh, so they. I was like, they, but they use. But they got active hands and stuff like that. But I think also the difference too is that it's like Dallas doesn't have the shot creators, and if Luca and Irving is not going to be great. Then yeah, Oklahoma City is going to win this, win this round. Um, I was like, I'm not going to. I was like, I'm not not. It's going to take more than one game for me to sway off my pick or whatever. 
Um, I I do think that it was still a pretty decent strategy. Kind of like Gafford just got to hit a lot of his shots. Because there was also a lot of buckets. I felt like he rushed that he if he didn't he would have like he would have scored because he has the I was like in situations I was like he has the advantage. Especially a lot of time if Chet's not or I was like if Chet's not around, but he could body Chet. I was like I thought Lively would be a good uh, a good matchup, but it, I was like but Chet sort of gets that one. If you're gonna have two seven foot ish lanky dudes, I was like Chet's gonna win, sort of get that one. I thought he sort of got the best on Lively in a lot of situations because I was like Gafford seemed a lot better at moving his feet than than I guess uh, uh, Lively did in a lot of, in a lot of spots. Um, but yeah, no, I was like. Give I was like give it to Oklahoma. They they scored. They I was like they hit their threes. That's also what I will say too is that the I also noticed too. I was like not and I was like not just this game but also the advantage of of, of the playoffs is that the teams that are real actual three point sh- like makers versus people who can make three point shots. Dallas can make three point shots, but they're not a three point shooting team. Oklahoma City is a three-point shooting team. Um, Minnesota versus Denver. Minnesota is a three-point shooting team compared to Dallas that can make three-point shots. By that, I mean, like, Luka can hit three-point shots. Kyrie can hit three-point shots. Uh, Tim Hardaway is a three-point shooter. Kleber is a three-point shooter. The I was like, Axum and all them can make three-point shots. Um, I like Shea can make three point shots. Isaiah Joe, Isaiah Isaiah Joe, is a three point shooter. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm trying to say. And I was like, I like Chet is a three point shooter. And I was like, I mean, he could sort of, I was like, he's sort of both. But you get what I'm saying? I was like, the Williams is a three point. I was like, the big man is a three point shooter. Um, I was like, Dort, I would say is a three point shooter because I was like, he, I was like. The, he doesn't need the rest of the game. He's a three and D guy. I was like, Williams can make three point shots. I was like, but I was like, but I think he has an overall game as well too. So that's what I'm saying is that when you're going against a team that could do that, their ceiling is a lot higher because it's like, yes, they they will live and die by the three, but the damn thing is that they can make those damn threes. They're more, they could be more constant at it. Whereas like. Dallas is like if they just over like like how like Miami beat the Celtics. The Celtics is a three point shooting team where it's like they live and die by that thing. The Heat when they made that when they were just shooting on them threes, you gotta shake their hand because you like that's not what I expected. The Knicks aren't a three point shooting team. They can make three point shot. Whereas Indiana, more of them is a three point shooting team. You get what I'm saying? Like that's what they do. Um and that's really what a lot of these matches I've really started thinking about in my head is really have been the playoffs been. Who is the actual three point shooting team versus people who can make it? Cause I like that's how the, they're playing nowadays. It's just like jacking up threes. It's like you'd rather do that and we'll just live with that than you taking a difficult two point shot, I guess. Um the other playoff game, Cleveland and Boston. Um, I don't really have anything here. I was like, I gave, I tried to give them a gentleman sweep just because I think it's a little disrespectful to think that you can't get one. Um, so I just sort of give, I just sort of get the benefit of the doubt there. But there, there's, I was like, there's no way. There, there's no way that they're going to be able, they can beat Boston. Um, like, so I was like, they're not even going to be really too much of like talking about their matchup because it's not even something where it's like, oh, coulda, woulda. No, I was like, that. there's not that here. Um, I was like, even if Derek Garland, like, with bonkers with Mitchell, no, if you got, I was like, you got Brown and Derek White and then whatever, to take, like, whatever, like, you're going to get two of their three to four people. There's no, there's no hope in sight or anything like that. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I was like, now that I had a chance to actually like really like see the game, that I'm like, I just, I was like, I'm not, I don't know about underestimated, but I was like, I didn't give the right amount or the enough analysis and thoughts to Oklahoma City, and 
this game sort of changed all that once I started looking at things. But anyway, see you for the next set of games.